we have taken so far. Doing maths in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I really struggled. Well, thank you. To... <gasps> Do you know what? The power of editing. No one will ever know. <laughs> we have taken eight feet. <laughs> We have taken minus four. This is it then. Oh, it's happening. The final episode of our Christmas special, finding the best feature. And we haven't really agreed. No, we haven't agreed it, last have year. We're not agreeing this year um, on what to call this, really. But so far, we have taken 12 features. That's correct. And we have whittled them down to, well, two so far. Um, yes. And that is sharing on the web yeah, and background fetch. Yeah. So background fetch will have to endure another match before it gets to face sharing. Or maybe not. Who mm. knows? We will see. We have four features left. We've been picking these at random, which is why we're so scrappy at remembering them. Um, but yeah, it's time to, it's time to do the, the last four. Yeah. You start um, picking. Is it, oh, it's me. Because symmetry. It, yes. Excellent. So I'm going to pick this one. Uh, and I have. Prefers styles. Prefers styles. Oh, no, it's not Paul Lewis. It's Jake. <laughs> did you put the wrong face on? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it shows that we had the software ready just in case he walks in and wants to do a feature. You never know with him. You never Sometimes know. he just appears and just, just takes just over the show. Sync up from... <laughs> he just can't let go. Uh, oh, yeah, you want me to talk about this, right? OK. I mean, you don't have to, but. Again, this is a little bit of a two for one. <sighs> so I know, I know. Um, this is a CSS feature. Mm -hmm. It allows you to hook into things that the user prefers, like a preference that they have expressed, usually at the operating system level. <laughs> uh, that's, that's a good description. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> that's what it is. They've said, I prefer like everything to be dark because <laughs> I'm sad about life. <laughs> so can you do that? And like, and yes, we can. And yes, we can. And now you can do it on the web as well. So this is how you'd have it. You'd, you'd have like your media query. Uh, prefers color scheme dark or light, and you provide your exceptions to your styles. Sometimes it would be really, you know, well, we did this with the Chrome Dev Summit website where we were just overriding a series of um, custom properties. Yes, it worked great. Colors, and it worked. We did that good. plus, I think, two or three minor adjustments for contrast on some elements. But other than that, yeah. that pattern worked great for us. It worked really, really well. Um, you can also access it with JavaScript using match media, as you can with all any. the media queries. Uh, the other part of it, um, is prefers reduced motion, yeah. which, uh, again, is a feature that operating systems are exposing. Does it bug you that they didn't just make it a true false media query? That is, that is a good point, but I think I know why. OK. So uh, something that Adam Argyle, uh, who, our colleague who d does a lot of the CSS stuff, explained to me is the intent of this is not to cancel all animation. Right. So you might. It's more to if you had like a constant animation going. True. Like it's sort of like a wavy thing on the page. But that's why I said reduced motion. Like what is the difference between saying prefers reduced motion reduce to prefers reduced motion? True. Oh, that's true, isn't it? I find I find I find it oddly hard to memorize this. Like to actually remember what the correct that yeah. Because the other one is prefers color scheme, light or dark. That makes sense. Yes. Because it's an open-ended question, but. Prefers reduced motion is a yes no question, and we reply with reduced. It should be prefers motion. Yeah. And then you can add in none yeah. as a third value to, like, say, just no. <laughs> no. Or, or roller coaster. Or, yeah, or <laughs> just go. Go nuts. Yeah, just go for it. Just like make everything move. Make the whole page <laughs> spin around. Just do in CSS star animate rotate and see you've just got. <laughs> I want to do that. Yeah. I want to see what that looks like. Uh, we, I mean, who wouldn't want that? Because um, maybe you're in a <laughs> you're stuck in a washing machine and your laptop's outside. And you counteract and the rotation. Need... <laughs> exactly. So why yeah why wouldn't you want to do that? Um, you've really spoiled this feature for me by pointing this out. <laughs> Takes two to tangent. <laughs> it's wrong. It's the wrong shape. Oh, like I. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter now. It's, it's you don't want broken. it to win anymore. <laughs> no, I hate this. <laughs> this is disgusting. I mean, OK, <laughs> let's try and ignore the naming. This, this is an important feature for people who like, maybe get nauseous with like, certain kinds of animation. 
And they've told their operating system that your website can now react to it using this slightly badly named API. So there you go. <laughs> slightly. Fine. There. That is the feature. Um, All right. Yeah. Up against, up against first reduced motion is native lazy loading. Native lazy loading. Check that out. OK. Um, yeah. All right. Let me what, tell what you. Is, what is it? It is. Why is it? Big fan of this feature. Basically, it allows you to just put a new attribute on images, and the browser will automatically not load them until you scroll them into view. Right. Yes. OK. And here's a yes. fun fact. It also works on iframes. It does also work on iframes. Does it, Jake? Right. OK. <laughs> Story time. <laughs> we talked about this on stage at Chrome Dev Summit. I did, in fact. And I and Soma said it works on iframes, and I ran on stage to tell you you were wrong, but it was I <laughs> who was wrong because I was thinking of the aspect ratio hack that we talked about in earlier episodes, which, which does not work on iframes. Does not work on iframes. This. So, so yeah, yeah the, both this iframes. Does work on iframes. You are forgiven. Thank you. Thank Although you. Although I will not let you forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank um, you. Yeah. So both images and iframes, you can now just put in your page and don't have to worry about the initial payload because the browser can load them lazily. Right. And we know that there's like you can do something with. Intersection observer or scroll events, like it is, it is a good amount of code, but it's mostly just a super convenient feature. Yes, it's polyfillable. It is absolutely. That's why the people have written this with intersection observer or. And it's, it's only a, so we. I wrote it for the Chrome Dev Summit website, and it's like four lines in intersection observer, but it does depend on JavaScript. Yes, and you can. How do you progressive enhancement? How do you make sure the image loads if JavaScript is disabled or broken? Yes. But still not loaded if you have JavaScript. And that's actually yeah. quite challenging. It is really challenging. So what do we think? This is, is actually interesting. Yes. Both are fairly high level, fairly simple. Yep. I think native lazy loading does much more good for the web health overall. So, so here's my, my summary of the two, or oh, well, the sort of pros and cons. Prefer styles, there's no polyfill other than giving the user a button to press. Which most of them you want to do anyway, because just because the user has dark mode enabled, maybe they don't actually want dark mode on the site right now. Possible, yeah. I, I, I think that is especially true as, like if you're in a darker room than usual. Yeah. Um, I don't. You don't want to yeah. switch your operating system to dark mode just yeah. because you're in a darker room. Yes, especially if you're just reading one website that's a bit bright and it has yeah. an option. OK, I'll take that. That's fair. Whereas with nat native lazy loading, it is extremely polyfill. That's like, true. It's so easy. But it, that might still be a bar that stops developers doing it, and especially with the concerns around JavaScript, where it does get orders of magnitude more complicated. Yeah. And native lazy loading can save people a lot of data, and just having an attribute that does it. And it's resilient to JavaScript. Like it doesn't use JavaScript. Like people who surf without JavaScript or who have disabled, or when it crashes, yes, it will stay functional. Stuff. I, this is actually a, native lazy loading is a really good example of the extensible web yes. manifesto in progress because we we did all the low level stuff which is intersection observer, um, actually it's just that and it it's just intersection observer, yeah. um, but then we have gone and done the higher level thing. Here's you know we we we've, we've seen how does people the use spec it. actually yep. rely on the like the does the native lazy loading spec rely on the intersection observer spec? That's a good question. I actually before we came to film this this. Discussion ongoing around the spec for this, and part of the, the thing that is happening right now is the discussion of how the intersection is calculated. And I don't know if it is referring directly to what what might actually is more likely to happen. I think it would be less if this HTML feature depends on intersection observer. What they're probably more likely to do is take those intersection things into the HTML spec right. and make the intersection observer spec that, reference the HTML. That makes would make sense. Yeah. And uh, would probably is desirable. Web standards. There you go. Um, I'll it's native lazy loading, isn't it? it? I mean, yeah, I, that, that's what I will put my money. So and and dark mode is very trendy, but yeah. as you say, you can do it, you can do it with a button. Yeah, that's yeah. Native lazy loading is yeah is a yeah lovely solution to that to that problem. Well, that means native la native lazy loading native lazy loading na na la advances native lady loading, and now we have to find out who native lazy loading faces off against. Right, it's that one. I've made my decision. Form, form elements. elements. There's, there's a more specific thing there, because we've had form elements for 
We did have form elements on the platform for a couple of a while, for a good one. Yeah, that was good. Thank you. Um, and I will tell you, uh, this, it, again, a couple of features sort of rolled into one. Uh, did I have one double? I had one double feature, and it's in the finals. Well, OK. <laughs> so that's Discord. the form. It's a form. Oh, look, there's the form element. Found it. There it is. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when you do this here, like this label, uh, well, there's a few behaviors that are, that are attached to this uh, input here. If you click name, because it's part of the label, uh, it will now uh, focus the, the input. Yeah. Um, also, uh, you know, you, you it doesn't have to be inside the label. It can have like a reference for. ID. Yeah, for an ID. Um, but also, when you hit submit here, the value foo or whatever the user has typed in there will be sent to the server uh, post with this action. Yes. This thing here, this fancy thing, uh, fancy custom input, does not have those features. No, because it's custom. So it does now. Oh. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Uh, so there's a couple of ways you can do parts of this. In terms of the submission thing, uh, this is an event you can hook into. So the add event list oh, form okay. data. Uh, what you get is an event object. It has a form data property. And that will ha contain what the, uh, the browser has collected about the form so far. Mm -hmm. And you can modify it. Oh, you I can see. You can it. also inspect the other data. You can append yes. your own, but you can also mangle whatever is already there. Exactly. Okay. So it's like a post-processing step, which includes adding stuff. Um, so that could be a simple way to, to have your custom elements uh, or whatever it, you know, take part of the, in the form properly. Yeah. Uh, or dun, you dun, can dun, do dun. this. Custom elements. This is a custom element feature. Now, the, the key here is to say form associated equals true. That's, a, a, that's, that's, a, that's magic, isn't it? Uh, that is magic uh, in the same way that the uh, observed attributes right. uh, one is magic. And so with this being true, it's saying you know, the browser now knows this takes part in the form. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can do this attach internals thing, which is a, like a, a way of getting a secret API. So secret. So secret. Uh, which you, it, it's a little bit how when you attach a shadow root. Right. It's sort of a little bit like that. Uh, but it's not an element. What it, does, it just has a load of like, APIs as part of it. Um, so you can see these things here. Uh, so getting the form will return this internal form. Form, yeah. Yeah, and and uh, element. If, if you've got an input element or something, dot form will always return the form. So, so it's just, kind of good practice to, yeah, to do that. Do uh, but we've got some method, and what that will do is set the value to yes please, and that's telling the browser this element, which is taking part in the form, now has this value. So you will be you know internally listening to like clicks and stuff and the shadow root and whatever. And updating what the form value is, and you can tell it yeah, if it's so now valid or not. Old practices apply on how to do an input or whatever custom elements, but now we can just yeah. participate in the form part. And by setting the, val the validity when the user hits submit, if one or more of the elements are not valid, it won't submit, and it'll do that thing where it shows the little pointer and say, "This, yeah. is, this is the wrong one. Like, do something about this." Uh, and that is the feature. Ah. So. I have one left. One left. Do you know which one it is? No, I can't. I can't remember either. I can't remember what it is. It must be a good one. From entries. From, From entries. entries. Right, I'm going to try to do um, the Jake. Go on then. Oh, that was really good, actually. Close. That was much better than my <laughs> stupid attempt. Go on then. Talk us through. From, From entries. entries is I actually really like it. So there is object dot entries, which will turn an object into an array of key value pairs. Yes. So now you have a basically a list representation of what this object is. This is old, but it's this, just, this is so useful though yes, for iteration. Like, yeah, you can it iterate the over time. the. Yeah, you can just write for loops to get like key value and get both at the same time. Yep. You can actually map over the entire object and you know say, oh, I want the keys to be upper key, uh, uppercase, or I want the values to be plus one, or both at the same time. However, once you do that, how do you then? Reassemble this list representation back right. to an object, I see. and that is pretty much what from entries is. It's the inverse of object dot entries. Gotcha. It takes a list representation of key value pairs and just gives you the object. And I, I think, well, exactly what you said there. <laughs> that's that's the cases where I've really needed this or, or wanted this, and it's when I've done, uh, you know, I want to map an object. Yeah, like mapping an array is really easy. But I want to take this object, I want to map over the keys and the values, and output something different. And this just lets you do it. Yeah. That, that, that's it. That's it. It's, that's it. That's All right. It. That's it. All right. Let's have a think about this, then. Um, 
Right. So we got from from, <laughs> from entries from is, inform is from entries is a polyfill which you can write with reduce as a one liner. Oh, that's a good point. But but yeah, it's it's not a new capability. It's super nice that we have it. It makes it much more like code is just much more expressive. But yeah. you can just define your own from entries, and it's a one liner with yeah. reduce. It's oh, use reduce. Yeah, yeah. I'm not I, sure if there's performance implications of mutating the object over oh, and over, but in the end, no, it should be fine. Um, so yeah, I, I would say form. Elements. Yeah, because you clone the object and then just mutate it. Yeah, I think based on that, it's yeah. it's not a new capability. It's nice that it's there. It's good that it's there, but but the form elements Bam. is a new capability, and like you could say part of that is just like a custom element feature. A lot of people are like, well, I'm not that bothered about custom elements. Um, I was thinking, even if you're using React, being able to define your own custom form elements, this yep. makes it a lot, much more attractive to use custom elements for it, because you get I think so as well. It just ties it into how the browser already behaves. Yeah, agreed. All right. So well. form elements advances. Yes, it does. And goes against native lazy loading. And this is, I would say this is tough. Because so, we're yeah. like, I'm like, this is something. The, the native lazy loading is something I encounter every site I built. Yes. And I'm often too lazy to do it right. I will omit progressive enhancements or yeah, just do the intersection observer thing and don't basically ignore people who don't run JavaScript or where JavaScript breaks. Form elements is not polyfillable, but I don't encounter it that often. I, yeah, and I would always say is like, I don't know how much I care about people who disable JavaScript because like as much as I like, how do I feel about people who like disable SSL? In their browser, you know, it's kind of like, well, why do that? You know, it's it is part of the web, part of the platform, yeah. But the the thing I do care much more about is the people who haven't deliberately disabled JavaScript, but the people who are maybe running a, a browser that is older than expected and yeah. maybe didn't test properly or, or in, but like so maybe the JavaScript failing. Yeah, JavaScript file just doesn't run because you have one const in there, and the browser doesn't do const. Yeah, or, or a server hiccup that suddenly that. just returns an empty file or a 404. For, and this does happen. Wrong MIME um, type. Uh, yeah, the MIME type goes wrong, some, something like that. And that is that is one of the reasons that I'm super keen on progressive enhancement. Yeah. You know, it's, I mean, it's never been about non-JavaScript people for me. It's been about performance and resilience. Yeah. Um, so I, I do like it for that. And I like that it lowers the bar to um, doing the right data. thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The form elements thing is a new capability. And it, it, it has that. It's not entirely progressive enhancement, because it still depends on JavaScript. Yeah. But it, it depends on less JavaScript to do the same thing that forms should do. Uh, and it will get you like some of the accessibility for free. Because if you're using the native validation stuff um, and the native value stuff, I'm assuming, I mean, the, you know, the data is there. That can be exposed to accessibility APIs. Yeah. No, I'm interested um, like you can there is form data as an API to assemble form data and turn it into a multi-part mind body, whatever you need. Yes. But there is no API to do a post navigation. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I mean you can So just, there's actually yeah. no, no no because I thought like, oh you could just use a form. You I mean, can cancel the submit and then assemble your own form data. But there is no way to send that form data as Oh that's interesting. As a post navigation. Huh. That's really that is really interesting because I, I hadn't thought about that because I in my head I was thinking, well you can just Assemble a form in the background and hit sub and call submit on it. That works, but that cannot include files. It cannot right. include. Whereas with this, it's a really that's interesting. That's a really niche use case of this, but it is something that I've heard people ask for before. It's like yeah. I want to do a navigation with a file. Um, we encountered it with uh, Swoosh, didn't we? With a share target. Yes. Where we wanted to test it, and we had to. You wrote a form. So you can test it. That is true. So if you wanted to do like your own sort of rudimentary like sharing from one site to another using like normal HTTP message, uh, yeah. methods, like we saw with sharing before, that you can do this with um, uh, like the native share platform. But you can do it between websites using. So that should be clear. You can do a fetch request, but that won't navigate your page. Yes. And which, whereas if you're sort of doing a share, you you actually kind of want to you like navigate with a post request, with, with which some is possible data. Interesting. I hadn't thought about that. That's. I mean, it's going to sort of come down to like how much of, how much is this going to benefit the web? I, I guess that's what a, I was going to bring up. So I think native lazy loading still takes this one home because it is 
pretty much literally every website. Every website has images. And yeah. you want to lazy load them. It's the right thing to do. They are, I believe, the, the heaviest thing on. Yeah, 50% on... of a page weight on average, on at least on HP Archive, is images. Yes. And so this will mean you download less of it, especially if you're, because if you're just going to a page, yeah. uh, just to click one of the things at the top of the page, which I do all the time. Open a blog you know, post. Oh, not interested after all. Leave. Yeah. Or, or even like you go to, um, you know, a shopping website yeah. to click the, the button there. But you just downloaded all of the stuff there. I mean, the browser can cancel it. But you know, by that time, you've already downloaded a lot. Big problem if you're on a muted connection. Um, so are we in agreement? Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah, have it. Go on in. All right. So that this is interesting. This is, uh, the, we're going to find the next finalist. finalist. So in the semifinal, we have. That was a janky animation. We need to get, look, this, this is such an old tablet that we've been doing this, this stuff yeah. with. And it's only because we tried to do it with a pixel book, but there was some flickering flickering thing with the camera. Oh, everywhere. That, looked up? Uh, yeah. What, what, I think we should uh, get in my the, life. <laughs> I think we should <laughs> yeah. get the new like $50,000 Mac Pro. What, and just balance a monitor here? Yeah. OK. That should run the animation smoothly. It's not touch screen, though, is it? That's the <laughs> For $52,000, you still don't get touch screen. <laughs> Yeah, that's so. actually true, isn't it? It's like, yeah. Come on, just you, throw that in. Yeah, you get, you, your machine can roll downhill. Yeah, for four hundred dollars. No touch screen. Right. What are we talking about? Tangent. So, <laughs> we've got native lazy loading versus background fetch on our old Ooh. janky tablet that doesn't. That's so old it doesn't even receive Android updates anymore. Nice. I found out this morning. Okay. Oh, this is rough. I find this really hard. So we've got a very simple feature like this, as in it's simple to use. As and as we said useful for pretty much every website that is yep. in existence. One of the things I would say about this is that uh, an interesting part of this feature, the native lazy loading thing, is the browser is actually free to apply it automatically. Is it? The, yes. The default value for it is auto. Uh, and I believe. But don't many sites rely on images being loaded off screen? Uh, so this is a fix I made to the spec. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, because I was saying, like I, I think. Uh, you know, there are cases where people use it for like preloading images mm. to go into a canvas, something, 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 something. Um, so the rule is, uh, it, the, I think the, we came up with it must immediately load uh, if it's detached from the document or if it's created by JavaScript. Oh, OK. Interesting. Uh, so if you've got a lot of image tags in the out of scroll view that you're relying on lazy loading, uh, relying on like listening for a load event on, uh, it might never fire. Interesting. Uh, so I think we're, we're actively Could monitoring that. Could also see. be changed like if there's an unload listener, and no explicit oh, loading attribute. Yeah, I could load it. Yeah. Either way, okay, that's very interesting because okay. that's actually I wanted to bring it up originally, but didn't because like can't work. But if that mm. is the case, that would be great if this opens a path for just making the reducing the page rate of many pages just yeah. by making the user agent smarter. So I was bouncing that around in my head. You can't do the load event detection because you might have the load event on the uh, document element. And that would bubble the image one bubbles or captures at least. Like there is oh. ways of, of listening to that. Um, Stupid. Anyway, problem. sorry. What were, what were you saying? Because while I was just thinking about the other thing. <laughs> um, no, I just like that if, if there is an actual path that allows us to reduce the page weight yes. by making these agents smarter, that's a big yeah. plus. Whereas this feature makes more downloading happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it's an easy decision. <laughs> the one that saves data rather than uses it. No, I. So we, we, yeah, we're talking about a, a new capability. Um, for a set of websites that are doing uploads yes. and downloads, a, which is a limited set. I don't, I don't, I don't want to put a number yeah. on it, but it's definitely. I have I written a website where I would have used it. I don't think I have. And I'm saying that nobody has. But the things that we have written here, we wouldn't have used background fetch, while we would have used image lazy loading. Oh yeah, it's, it, this is. This is a really tough one. Yeah, it is. Uh, you're right. I'm sort of convinced fetch. myself. I don't need background fetch on my blog unless I do the thing we talked about earlier yeah. of like download all my articles, whatever. Um, and again, yeah, that's with small enough data, background fetch or a fast enough connection, background fetch matters less. Yeah. Definitely. Um, you would still do the right thing because you don't know how fast the connection is of your yeah. for, for your user. Things like uploading videos to YouTube or photos to yeah, Google I mean, Photos or Flickr. That, that's that, amazing that it works now. Yeah. But everyone has images. Yeah. 
it feels like in the second year in a row, we are converging on um, like high level features. As a reminder, I think last year it was Scroll Snap. It was Scroll Snap. Scroll was Snap. Our winner. Yeah. yeah. It's, I don't know why I'm getting so serious about this. I'm getting really worked up. Like, like, like all the rest are going to be deleted. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else is it. fired. And especially because this is my the one I this one I this one I worked on this one. Like, go on then, yeah. Dun dun dun. And that means, for yep. the final, the final, final, final. All right. It is Surma versus. So after all your complaining in the first episode <laughs> that it was just me winning, the final has come down to you versus you. OK. And you, and you killed my feature in the process. I did. <laughs> and I am not sorry. Right. OK, come on. I'm going to try and forget all about that. Um, and it's odd, because some of the arguments you were making before apply again. So sharing is very much a uh, sort of PWA feature. The use case is a the, the niche. Navigator.share. I guess that part I can't use, because that's not the new part. The new part is now images in navigator.share. When did we lose the aspect ratio thing? I feel like I used that, that more than native lazy loading. Aspect ratio Wait, lost, lost, against, um, lost against sharing. This is rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is just rubbish. What have we done? So. Sharing contains right. being able to share images to the system from the web app. And we should say it's specifically the, and, the sharing out is. That's what I mean, because just being yeah. able to tap into the sharing part is not new. Just being able to share files out yes. is new in 2019. So while sharing itself is cool, yeah. sharing images is a more niche use case, because it doesn't happen as often. Often you say, like, oh, here's my blog, treat it out. Kind so, of thing. so the big story here is really the sharing from native to web, yes. which is a PWA only feature, but it's a big deal. It is. But also, again, Who's less you... customers. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Fewer than background fetch, I'd say. Like more things deal with like probably, larger yeah. downloads. I think if we had sharing, sharing versus background fetch, arguably background fetch would have won. Maybe. But that matchup didn't happen, so no time. <laughs> <laughs> I I think it's it is. I think it's native lazy loading. I, I think, I think, I agree. We have found the feature, the best feature of 2019, 19. according to us, which is the only way that matters. Is native lazy loading. When we put this to an audience, we're gonna oh, it's gonna be. Which is a video we will release at some point. At some point. <laughs> at some point, January probably. When the Christmas um, heads don't make sense anymore. When the, yeah. Um, well, we were not. We, no, I mean at CDS, we will release the CDS version where we talk oh. to the audience, where we were not wearing Christmas stuff. Uh, it was background fetch. Did we have the same matchup? No, just the no. overall winner was background fetch. No, because we did it. We've done it random each time. Yeah, and I don't that, know how much that it could have been it. by coincidence. We had the same matchup. But I still, I, I, I still think that this, this was a, a, a lot of work. Like the spec for this is actually really big. It yeah. was, it was a lot of effort. Um, Imagine it's the first time that it's an HTML attribute tapping into layout. But it was a really good cross-browser effort as well. Um, I think it was. I think everybody agreed that this is a problem that needs solving. Yes, absolutely. Or an easier way to solve it. And and and, and there's a lot to be said for lowering the bar for doing the right thing. And yeah. I think I think that is something that we don't do enough in web standards, uh, especially with the you know extensible web model. We a lot of the time we throw out the the tools and we go off you go, and we still see. Many many websites not using those tools because they're complicated because they, they can do are. lots of stuff. Um, this is a good example of yeah lowering that bar and together with the aspect ratio proposal. Yes, boom. Can we bring that in as and, and it's like a, a kind of can we roll it into that as, a, <laughs> as an extra feature? No, oh. <laughs> I really like the aspect ratio thing. Uh, okay, okay, native lazy loading. There we go. We found our feature of 2019, and we will see you in. 2020? That's the next, yeah, that's the next number, 2020. Yeah. See you there. Um, yes, hello. <laughs> Are you on the telephone? <laughs> uh, so I'm speaking. How oh, may I help you? We'd like to film an episode of 203. <laughs> Is that OK? <laughs> Is it convenient for you right now, sir? Shall I call back later? So I get off the phone <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> <laughs>